Hello and welcome to this week's episode of AWS Cloud Bytes News. I'm your host Bhavesh Kumar. Friends, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell icon for future updates. Also comment on topics you want me to cover for our architecture and certification series. Let's look at our first news. The first news is coming from Amazon EMR Studio. EMR Studio is now upgraded to JupyterLab 3.1.4 version. Amazon EMR Studio is an integrated development environment that makes it easy for data scientists and data engineers to develop, visualize, and debug big data in analytics applications written in R, Python, Scala, and PySpark. With EMR Studio, you get fully managed notebooks based on JupyterLab. JupyterLab is a next-generation web-based user interface for open-source project Jupyter. You can search through the cell outputs in notebooks, view the execution time and duration of a cell, and view the table of contents auto-generated from the notebook markdown cells for easy navigation within the notebook. Moving on to the next news. The next news is coming from Amazon AppStream 2.0 application and entitlements for SAML 2.0. You can control access to a specific application within your Amazon AppStream 2.0 stack based on SAML 2.0 attribute assertions. SAML 2.0 federated user identities can access multiple AppStream 2.0 stacks from a single SAML 2.0 service provider application. Application entitlements is available when using SAML 2.0 federation to AppStream 2.0 stack. You can create application entitlement in all AWS regions where AppStream 2.0 is offered at no additional cost. AppStream 2.0 offers pay-as-you-go service pricing. Application entitlement works by matching a supported SAML 2.0 attribute name such as role, groups, title, or cost center to a value when a SAML 2.0 user identity federation to an Amazon AppStream 2.0 service provider application. If the entitlement is true, that is there is an attribute name or value match, access is entitled to one or more applications in a stack. Previously, each stack required a separate service provider application configured in your SAML 2.0 identity provider. These features will allow you to streamline access control to your AppStream stacks and reduce the number of fleets and images that you have to maintain due to application access restrictions. For example, from a single SAML 2.0 service provider application in your IDP relaying to a single AppStream 2.0 stack, you can entitle users belonging to one group in one set of applications in another group to a different set of applications. Moving to the next news. Amazon ECR adds the ability to monitor repository pull statistics. Amazon Elastic Container Repository, or ECR, launched the ability to monitor repository pull statistics through Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch will now provide you statistics on the number of images pulled from your private ECR repository by default. The new pull statistics help you to monitor usage pattern or identify anomalous behavior by observing image pull request per repository. With additional insight, customers can identify commonly accessed repositories, understand the adoption of new repositories, or have a better insight on repository usage. Customers facing service limits can use this data to understand which repositories are seeing the greatest number of image pulls or to uncover anomalous behavior that is driving unnecessary pull requests. Moving on to the next news. The next news is coming from AppSync. AppSync supports configurable batching for Lambda resolvers. AppSync now supports configurable batching sizes for AWS Lambda resolvers and direct AWS Lambda resolvers. AppSync is a managed GraphQL service that simplifies application development by letting you create a flexible API to secure access, manipulate, and combine data from one or more data sources with less network calls. AppSync to configure the maximum batching size to use when resolving a recurring field within an AWS Lambda Resolver or a direct AWS Lambda Resolver. You can define Lambda Resolvers with a configurable maximum batching size instead of using a default maximum of 5. AppSync will resolve the recurring field by batching calls to your Lambda function by your configured batching size. With AWS AppSync, you can create GraphQL APIs that your application interact with over the internet. 
AWS AppSync makes it easy to interact with the data source inside and outside of your AWS account with AWS Lambda resolvers that utilize AWS Lambda functions to execute business logic and fetch data. Moving on to the next news, fine-grained access control for open search service domains. The open search project is a community-driven open source fork of Elasticsearch in Kibana. Amazon Open Search Service is a successor of Amazon Elasticsearch Service. It now supports enabling fine-grained access control over existing domains. Fine-grained access control adds several capabilities to help you have a better access control over the data stored in your domain. Fine-grained access control can now be enabled on all Amazon Open Search service domains with Elasticsearch version 6.7 or higher and Open Search version 1.0 or higher. Features include creating and mapping local users, authorizing external identities to predefined security roles, limiting access to confidential data, field masking, and many other advanced capabilities, including document-level security and field-level security. Fine-grained access control enables different teams to share an Amazon open search service domain without being able to see or modify other teams' data, dashboard, or visualization, enabling greater efficiency and centralizing management. You can also limit each user to only the permissions needed to perform specific tasks. This is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and press the notification bell icon for future updates. This is your host, Mavish Kumar, signing off. Thank you.